In this video, we're going to study the meninges. Those are the coverings over the spinal cord and brain. And we'll look at the spinal cord. Here we see, um, this is the cerebellum back here, and then this is the spinal cord. And these little um, nerves that are coming off are little rootlets or little nerves that turn into spinal nerves. Um, these are arteries here. There's an artery there, an artery there. But this is the spinal cord. Let's look at the meninges first. The meninges, there are three membranes that lie between the skull or vertebral column and the nervous tissue of the central nervous system. So there's three, the dura mater, the arachnoid mater, and the pia mater. So here's the spinal cord, and here's the three coverings. The most superficial one is the dura mater, then the arachnoid mater, then the pia mater. We also see that in this cross-sectional image as well. Here's the dura mater in sort of light blue, and then right deep to that is the arachnoid mater, and then covering the spinal cord itself is the pia mater. So first let's look at the dura mater. That, that's the most superficial layer, and that's Latin for tough mother. It's called tough mother because it's composed of dense irregular connective tissue. Also has um, arteries and veins running through it. Remember that dense irregular connective tissue would be filled with those tough collagen fibers. And it forms the inner layer of periosteum of the skull. But in the vertebral column, the dura mater is separated from the vertebral canal by the epidural space. So let me, let me show that. So we're looking at um, the skull right now. Here's the skin on top of your head. Right deep to that is that um, flat tendon called the aponeurosis. And then the periosteum is here. The periosteum is what covers your bone. We studied that when we studied bones. But then on the underneath side of the bone, you also have a periosteum. That's this layer in blue. This periosteum that's on the inside, that's the super, superficial meningi called the dura mater. And over here on the spinal cord, it's a little bit different, but, but, but similar as well. So this outer gray covering that we're looking at, that's the dura mater. So it covers the spinal cord like this, and then it's continuous with the spinal nerves for a little bit of, for a little bit of time there. Then we have the arachnoid mater. The arachnoid mater is the middle, arachnoid mater is the middle layer, and it's web-like and it lacks blood vessels. You can see it's web-like here in this cartoon, and then in this drawing here you see um, the web-like structures. The brain sort of is like suspended from those arachnoid uh, fibers, if you will. The space between the arachnoid mater and the pia mater, that's called the subarachnoid space, and it's filled with cerebrospinal fluid, or sometimes just spinal fluid for short. So let's look at that. So here's the dura mater in white or gray. And then right deep to that is the arachnoid mater. And then deep to the arachnoid mater is the subarachnoid space. And that subarachnoid space is filled with spinal fluid. The pia mater, that's Latin for loving mother, that's a more delicate membrane, and that's the one that's in contact with the spinal cord itself and with the brain. So it's the innermost layer that does contain blood vessels and nerves, and it attaches to the surface of the brain and the spinal cord, and it even follows the contours of the brain. So it's a thin layer right against the spinal cord and brain. It's a pia mater. So here they are in review. This is the most superficial layer, the tough layer, the, the tough mother called the dura mater. And then deep to that, we have the arachnoid mater. And then underneath the arachnoid mater, that's where we have the cerebral spinal fluid. And then the pia mater is the layer that actually covers or touches the spinal cord. So the spinal cord begins at the base of the brain as it exits through the foramen magnum. Remember the foramen magnum when we looked at um, the skull? That's the big opening. That's where the brain stem, or brain and brain stem, exit through this, this opening. And as they do, then it's called the spinal cord down here. So this is the brain stem, and then as it exits, it's called the spinal cord. It ends around the second, uh, in between the first and second lumbar vertebrae. So down here is the end of it. And the function, as you know, it transmits impulses to the brain and from the brain. 
and it also houses the spinal reflexes as well. There's a cervical enlargement up here in the neck by the cervical vertebrae that provides um, nerves to the upper limbs. And then there's this lumbar enlargement, which is another thickened area, and that gives rise to the nerves of the lower limbs. And then lastly, we have this um, portion. It's not really the spinal cord, but it's rather spinal nerves that, that come off the spinal cord. It's called the cauda equina, Latin for horsetail. And those are the nerves that um, come out of the lumbar and sacral area. Here's some general info and definitions. So copy this down and then we'll talk through them with pictures. Spinal cord gives rise to 31 pairs of spinal nerves. There's two deep grooves in the spinal cord. There's the anterior median fissure and the posterior median sulcus. So the anterior median fissure, that's like a, like a, um, a groove, if you will. The fissure is larger than the sulcus, but they're both both grooves. And that divides the spinal cord in the left and right. In the spinal cord, we have gray matter that forms the butterfly-shaped core of the spinal cord, and that's composed of interneurons and cell bodies. So those would be unmyelinated. That's why they appear gray. And then the wings of the butterfly um, those are anterior horns, lateral horns, and posterior horns, which we'll see in just a moment. The white matter of the spinal cord surrounds the gray matter, and that's made up of bundles of myelinated nerve fibers called tracts. Remember, myelinated nerve fibers appear white. We have ascending tracts. That carries sensory information to the brain. And then the descending tracts, that carries motor information away from the brain. So towards the brain would be afferent, away from the brain would be efferent. The cell bodies of the sensory neurons that enter the spinal cord are located in the dorsal root ganglia, and that's just outside the spinal cord. And then the central canal is in the middle of the spinal cord, and that's filled with cerebral spinal fluid. So let's go through all of these terms. So this is a cartoon. And this is the, um, the slide. So the cartoon and then the real thing. So here's the gray matter. And then the white matter is outside of that. To orient yourself, look for the anterior median fissure. And opposite that will be the posterior median sulcus. Notice the fissure is a little deeper and wider than the, than the sulcus. So when you're in the gray matter, we have this anterior horn that's towards the anterior median fissure towards the front. We have this lateral horn, and then we have this posterior horn. This posterior horn, um, that sort of gives rise to this dorsal root, which we see over here. Here it's labeled dorsal root. And then we have the dorsal root ganglion. Remember dorsal means same thing as like posterior. And we have the ventral root. Ventral root is like anterior, it's in the front. So you can see all of those structures here on the slide as well. All right, let's go through that again. It was kind of hard to tell the dorsal root and, and ventral root. So here we are, here's the, here's the anterior median fissure. So this is the front. This is the anterior root or the ventral root. This is the back, so this is the posterior root or the dorsal root. And then along the dorsal root, we have this thing called the dorsal root ganglion. What a ganglion is, it's an area in the peripheral nervous system where the cell bodies of the neuron aggregate. So we'll see that in a slide um, later. But this is the anterior root or ventral root. This is the posterior root or dorsal root. And this is the dorsal root ganglion. And then where the ventral root and dorsal root come together right here, that's the spinal nerve, and that's what exits through the intervertebral foramen. So you have 31 pairs of these spinal nerves. Here's another little um, cartoon image, helps you see the anterior median sulcus, or anterior median fissure fairly well, and you can see the posterior median sulcus too. You can also see these little rootlets coming out. This forms the ventral root. This is the dorsal root. This is the dorsal root ganglion, and this is the spinal nerve, where you have 31 pairs of those. 
Here's a slide preparation. We see all the same things. We see the central canal that's filled with cerebral spinal fluid. We see the gray matter. We see the white matter. We see the anterior horn, the lateral horn, the posterior horn. This is the dorsal root. And here's the dorsal root ganglion. Here's the anterior root or ventral root. And that comes together here to make the spinal nerve. So this kind of helps us um, put things together, I think, a little bit. So this is a sensory receptor here. This is taking information maybe from what's like a skeletal muscle, and it's bringing it through the dorsal root. It passes through the cell body that are located in the dorsal root, and then it goes through the dorsal root, and it synapses here with an interneuron. Remember, an interneuron is one that lies in the central nervous system. And then notice it can also um, synapse and go to the other side. It could perhaps um, uh, go up to the brain. Uh, we don't know for sure. But in, in this simple diagram, it's synapsing uh, within the spinal cord. And then it's traveling through the ventral root, which is a motor nerve. And then that's going um, to the muscle. So sensory information goes through the dorsal root. Motor information goes through the ventral root. And if it's, if it's sensory, we could call it afferent. And if it's motor, we could call it efferent. Here's another picture um, we saw before, but this shows um, this real nicely again. This is the ventral root. This is the dorsal root. This is the dorsal root ganglion. These are the cell bodies. And where they come together, these are the spinal nerves. So one, two, three, we'd have 31 pairs of those. And you can see the gray matter, the anterior horn, the lateral horn, the posterior horn, and then we can see the white matter. These are the tracks that send information to the brain and away from the brain. There's the anterior median fissure, posterior median sulcus, and then the dura mater, the arachnoid mater, and then deep to that's the cerebral spinal fluid, and then the pia mater is the layer that's in contact with the spinal cord. So this is our last slide. This helps us put things together too. So maybe there's a stimulus in the environment. Someone touches your skin. It travels through the spinal nerve and then through the dorsal root ganglion, through the dorsal root, and then into the gray matter. And then it looks like it travels up through the white matter. So this is a myelinated axon going through the brain stem to the brain. And then your brain transduces the signal and you might feel that as someone like touching or applying pressure to your skin. And then on the other side of the coin, here you might have a thought originating or something like that. These are motor neurons. You decide you want to flex a muscle. So an impulse travels away from your brain down one of these descending tracks through the brain stem and then into the spinal cord. It synapses and then it travels along the ventral route. And this is um, to your skeletal muscle. So that's an overview of the meninges and the spinal cord.